We are closing in. We're in the end game now. Here we are with the penultimate episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for Season 5. And quite possibly the series as a whole. Because as of the recording of this review for the new episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. entitled The Force of Gravity. ABC has not done anything to do with the show. Whether it be to cancel it or revive it for at least another sixth and final season. Things might change by the time I upload this, but I am shitting bricks right now because ABC, as well as various other networks, t at, at the time of this recording, they canceled so many shows. By the way, congratulations, Brooklyn Nine Nine, for re re being revived by NBC. So that was pretty neat. But Shield, what's happening with my Shield? I need to know, and I feel like they're doing it on purpose. And I would not be surprised whatsoever if ABC decides to actually make their announcement next week during the finale. So I guess we're just going to have to wait. But I really do not appreciate ABC's little dilly-dally. So rant aside, let's talk about this new episode, which I will admit started off rather weak. It was actually a rather weak started episode because I swear to God, there's no other way that I can kind of summarize this, the beginning of this episode except for saying that almost every character... In the episode, whether they were kind of put in pairs with Fitz and Simmons, Yo-Yo and Mac, and even Coulson and May, who are now taken prisoner inside of that dude's, you know, Candyman's ship. I'm just going to call him Candyman. I can't remember his name in the, in the show, but I'm just going to call him Candyman. They literally all talked the way that us, the viewers, would talk amongst ourselves. And... For us, that works because we're watching the show. We're speculating, we're theorizing, we're breaking down what's kind of being given onto us. These characters are in a situation that they can't, uh, they can't have time to be thinking about this, except the only exception would probably be Coulson and May being prisoner there and kind of come up with ways on how to escape, which was a really nice little t t uh, trick that he did with his arm. But they talked in a similar vein as audiences do and they were very out of character for the type of people that they were because almost every character was talking about how far they have come you got Fitz and Simmons saying how the centipede serum was the thing that they were after during their first mission back in season one and now here they are using it to save Coulson's life I'm like hey look that's what I was thinking and then we have Mac and Sim uh, Mac and Yo-Yo and even Coulson and May talking about how Wow, look, Talbot's the bad guy. Remember when he was a good guy when we first met him back in like season two or three? I'm like, yeah, I was thinking about that between last week and this week after his huge transformation. It's why I'm doing these reviews. You don't have to put it here in my episode. And I know I'm sounding like a major grumpy pants and you're probably getting ready to hit that downvote button. But you got, you have to create a sense of immersion. That's what really ropes us in with these shows. And it's really weird to have characters talk like the audience do it really breaks the fourth wall unless you're Deadpool please do not do that and I felt like too many characters if one or two were doing it then it's fine but almost every character across the spectrum for the first 15 20 minutes of this episode was doing just that as they walked and talked about the things that are going to be set up for the finale next next week the only one that was a little bit outside of that and got kind of saved from that detriment was Daisy who was having a one-on-one -on -one with Kasai's father or grandpa inside of that room which was using a trope that I've seen before but it's still kind of cool in concept which is that they weren't really talking it was all in the subconscious and they had a really cool and decent payoff with her using as, as much of as her subconscious powers to break free and all you get is a little and I, was, I, I laughed out loud when that happened I'm pretty sure that was the intention behind the whole thing so I dug that. And then it's literally at that point when the episode finally picks up and we get some action. Granted, it's some rudimentary basic procedural shield action with action sequences and the fighting and the choreography. May and Daisy doing their thing and even Coulson had a hand in the action. Not only in the fighting, but also with his final... Well, I don't want to say final, but his ultimate kiss with May in the best form possible. I'm pulling up the shield and using that, I was like, that was the perfect moment. Very smooth for Coulson to pull off and everybody was taken by surprise, including May herself. And it was a really great moment that I think is the one that we kind of need now, especially if this does in fact be, become the end game for the shield family. And even more awesome things start to kind of evolve from that point forward where we finally Finally, we get rid of these generic ass aliens. I'm sorry, but these guys were weak with Candyman and his little cronies going around with their Bane masks. 
I didn't care for them, so I'm glad to see them finally be taken out of the picture for good by having the shit be blown up in their faces, literally. It's just a shame that this show is on TV because I was hoping, or at least on a network television uh, station, because I was really, really pulling for May to kind of pull a Guardians of the Galaxy type little uh, nod, at least towards Star-Lord from Infinity War, where she takes off on the little thing that kind of teleports him from one place to another, but right before she does, she goes like this. I think that would have been an amazing moment. I get the strongest feeling that if they could have, they would have written that in. But ABC said no. And now with these guys out of the picture, we can finally focus solely on the main villain that is ultimately much more captivating than anybody else kind of inside of this last arc, which really makes for a compelling kind of look at this character. And of course, I'm talking about Talbot. Sure, our characters were being a little self-referential with, look how far we've come, look, do you ever think that it was going to be Talbot? But it still doesn't get old looking at Talbot, coming home to his family, scaring them the way that I was anticipating him to do, and still think to myself, this is a guy who wore the stars and stripes on his uniform. And now here he is as a superhero, but with the completely twisted mentality that the Gravitonian put on him, especially now after absorbing Creel, which... R.I.P. The only little issue, and here comes little cynical David coming out once more, but I'm sorry. It was a little distracting to notice a minor plot hole, and that was him not being able to kill our main good guys. I understand that I'm not, I can't be rooting for Yo-Yo or Mac to be completely crumpled up like human paper dolls, like, like Graviton, a.k.a. Talbot, has a tendency to do with his victims. But why didn't he do that? Instead, he just picks up the cars, lets them get shot, and then, I don't know, I just feel like when you show our character have that am amount of power from the get-go and then not have them do that later on when they clearly could have, it makes for a slight break in how these powers kind of work. So unless they establish some rules, maybe he was too far away, but then again, why? how was he strong enough to pick up ton weighing cars right in front of them it's like mm, okay but i'll kind of overlook it because again talbot makes for a very compelling villain that i'm i'm gravitated towards i'm gonna kill myself now and with graviton now being more powerful than ever how is our small but yet really uplifting and spirited shield team going to face that now knowing that they have a conundrum on their hands because the episode ends with a cliffhanger that is a perfect setup for the finale. It's like a very, very, it's somewhat binary, but at the same time, it really is an interesting question. Do you save the world or do you save Coulson? And considering that we spent five years with these people, it, it does have a significant weight on not only our SHIELD team's shoulders, but ours when it's revealed that this is not the only, that the centipede serum that they have on their hands is the only one. So they only have enough for one. And I know some people could probably roll their eyes at this thing, but I think it's an element or at least a plot device that could be eye roll worthy if it was like in a movie where I didn't spend too much time with the characters. I'm like, okay, of course that was going to happen. Sure. And I know what type of choice they are. But here you have enough lineage with these characters that it's almost like I was kind of in the room with them. And so when they're facing this decision, it's kind of like, ooh, it really is a tough choice. Granted, you can kind of make the argument how this could be kind of vetoed by the potential inclusion of Thanos' plan from Infinity War. Don't worry, if you have not seen the movie, I'm not going to ruin Infinity War for you. But there's significant events that impact not just the setting that Infinity War takes place in, but practically the world and maybe even on a much more grander scale that there's kind of no way for the shield team to not get impacted by that and considering that they keep showing televisions um, newscasts showing the destruction of what's happening in new york and various other places in the country or even the world it looks like and some people even threw this around on the internet that this episode's taking place during the battle of wakanda in infinity war and then the next episode is going to finally show those circumstances from which we ended with infinity war and being that that plays out it's like okay how are you going to tie these two things together if you're even going to tie them in and is that going to kind of take away from the from the pathos of not only graviton as a villain but also the weight of the circumstances from either letting Coulson die and saving the world by killing off Graviton or going the other way around. So it makes for interesting things to ponder going into the finale. 
and it's really good and juicy material. It's just a shame that we had to deal with so much baggage of like 15, 20 minute episodes of these characters talking like the audience in a way that didn't sit comfortably for me. But at least it kind of alleviated once we got some cool fighting going down, some great action, kind of moving the pace with some great payoffs, and also some... I guess you could say some trimming of some things that weren't didn't need to be there. Again, Candyman and his cronies. And I'm very interested to see how some of these little visions that Robin has been having are going to be twisted around in a monkey's paw kind of way. Because every time she draws something, it's not necessarily 100% what you expect. So I'm interested to see how that's going to potentially backfire in Talbot's face. There was, I'm not going to lie though, there was a part of me that was hoping for her to say... Wakanda at the end when Talbot asked her where he can get some more Gravitonium, but I digress. For now, I'm going to be giving The Force of Gravity a solid 7 out of 10. Man, the first 15-20 minutes, kept checking my phone. I kept checking my phone, and that's never really a good sign. But now I throw it over to you guys. Here it is. The one for all the marbles. Because, again, ABC has this hook, line, and sinker, and they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing, and they're just going to hold off on it. And supposedly, some sources are saying that, yes, they're going to get renewed for Season 6. But who knows? They might change their mind at the last second. For now, all I know is that we have to cherish these last few moments leading up to the Season 5 finale, because it could be the one for the entire show. And considering that that might be the case, I throw it over to you guys. What are your guys' theories and plans for the season 5 and potentially series finale for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. How do you think it's going to play out? What's going to happen to Graviton? What's going to happen with Coulson? And do you think that Infinity Wars events are going to impact the team? Please, post your insights, comments, and suggestions in the well comment section below. Make sure to hit like and share to support this video. And of course, subscribe to stay tuned for when that series, uh, or I'm sorry, no, season 5 finale of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D uploads next week until next time guys i'll see you later some person just made off with somebody's purse and you gotta go catch them and it's a little bit time sensitive but at least it gets the urgent feeling of being a superhero where you have to go take care of this random crime because random crime happens and they put it here in this game and then some fucking kid loses his balloon be good now what do we say i'll never let my balloony go again you were supposed to say thank you you little shit Damn it. <laughs> he just abandoned his child.